James and I, James and I would like to welcome you to Clog Vlog, episode one. Woo, Clog Vlog. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> he has built-in clogs. Yes. So if you're new here, welcome. I'm Jana with Pearl Together. I am Jill. From Illinois. James and I are coming to you from the very dry and hot area of Southeast Wyoming. Mm. Yes. Look at him. I know. James was an abandoned barn kitty and he's just a love. He is just taken to being spoiled rotten. I mean, he looks like he's settling into that very well. <laughs> Look at him. Yes. He's very um, he's very relaxed and we call him sweet baby James. Oh, but he's a hellion. <laughs> really? See, I, I he does not like that. He's just trying to tell you that he's he's not. He's just <laughs> he likes my earrings. Very much so. Give him some yarn. He already got a hold of my uh, my contrast color for my club socks, and this was strung all through the dining room this afternoon. But it contrasts with him really well. Look. It does. Look how much cat hair love has been knitted into these socks. I know. We don't care about cat hair. It doesn't matter. I oh. know. It's love. One on a shelf. There we go. <laughs> That's hilarious. There we go. So, Clog Vlog, episode one. Clog Vlog, August 2022, because in <laughs> August, we knit clogs. We do. Because, why? Because why? Because. <laughs> lots of reasons. Because well, you said so. <laughs> because that's when I found your videos originally. Because my clogs wore out. Yes. And I found your videos. And it was August when you did your first set and you were actually on your front porch. Oh yeah. The old version. Yes. Okay. So if viewers really want to dig deep, there are two. Don't fall off, dude. There are two playlists of felted clogs. The original one that you're talking about was, I don't know, a vintage. while ago. Let's call it vintage. The vintage the clog vintage. video. Where I was like, it's kind of awkward. The lighting is super bad. I'm still it learning. Is to edit right. video. <laughs> it taught me how to knit clogs. And I still go back. I still go back to that one. But the reason I like to knit clogs in August is because, you know, it's not a big bulky project you have to have on your lap. It goes pretty fast. So it's like satisfying because you're using Very. giant size 13 needles and you're holding worsted weights double. So it's satisfying. It is. Yeah. And you feel like you're doing something to prepare for winter so I yes. feel a little bit if you're in the northern hemisphere so it it makes me feel productive and August is my least favorite month it is how come because it's hot and I don't like it <laughs> <laughs> although well, it is nice respite before harvest season too for you because you can't get into anything really complicated it's true. Because of all the canning that you eventually have to yeah, start. Yeah, September and October is nothing but canning and food preservation. Yeah. That's true. That's true. But it is hot and I hate that. But. You know what I love though about these clogs? Because Well, because I've had people say, oh, but my feet would get so hot. They don't. Ooh. Like your feet don't sweat. It's the perfect amount of cozy. Because wool is like temperature regulating. I mean, by nature, wool has this property. And it's also like, depending on, this is why I can't say this about superwash because I'm not sure how it's been treated, but hundred percent wool is like naturally non-stink. That is very true too, because yeah. I, I, I have some serious, um, what stink stank? Going on. I, yes, with my shoes and such, and my clogs don't ever smell. Right, or, right. And I wear the heck out of them. It's fantastic. So you. you showed us last time what yarn you're using and you're using worsted held double, correct? Yes, I am. hundred percent wool. Yep. Cascade 220. Oh, look. <laughs> and I had to get my, my clog. Coordinating um, clog bag. Well, I don't know if anybody else does this, but I have certain bags for certain things, you know? <laughs> 
I have a bag for the socks that I always have going. Um, this is my, these are my clogs. They're always in this bag. They have since the original clogs were knit. Yeah. Well, so eight. that, so that original playlist has been redone. We redid this in 2020. So it has been updated. If you don't want to watch the vintage version, <laughs> I'll put the link to the newer, newer version. And also I had somebody ask on the channel, I just want to address this real quick. Somebody asked on the channel, they'd really love to make clogs, but they have a front loading washing machine and the program could not be tampered with or like advanced. Like you can't stop it after the first swishy business and then have it drain and then do that again. So what I wanted to say is you still can make clogs. It is more labor intensive, but you can hand felt them with a bucket. And I mean, it takes a long time, but you can do it with a bucket and a plunger. You can do it with an old fashioned washboard. There's, you can just do vintage, it by hand. Vintage, vintage felting, retro felting. That's right. See, right. it could be a thing. That Yeah. So if you, I mean, ideally find somebody with a top loader agitating because that's perfect, but I, ha I don't have one of those anymore. And so I do it in my front loader and I show how on, on, but if you can't, and your machine doesn't let you mess with the program after it's already started, then you can hand wash it. Yeah. You know, like stomping grapes, just get in there in the tub and like stomp yeah. them. Feel hey. retro. I will say, I will put like a fair word of warning out there. If you've not knit clogs, they're kind of addicting. Yeah, they really, they really are. So our friend, if you're knitting them for tiny feet. Yeah. Oh, they're so cute. Baby clogs. The pattern that I've linked below is the adult version, but you can buy the child's version. And I've done that as well. So that's a lot of fun. So yeah, it's a good time to start Christmas clog knitting too. Just see it. Christmas clog knitting. Clog knitting clogs for Christmas gifts. Clog knitting. It's a noun and a verb. Clog knitting. Clog knitting. That's true. That sounds like a really disgusting medical term. Okay, let's not. <laughs> so you have your started, right? We've we've gonna I'm gonna link below to the first video in this series in the playlist, which is the inner soul. So all you're doing is knitting this like horseshoe kind of shaped thing. Mm -hmm. You want to show yours? I do. And I will say as an experienced clog knitter, I am amazed at how fast the sucker went this time. Now I remember my first few set of clogs. Um, I had not done any wrap and turns. Right. And so I was a little bit nervous about the wrap and turn. And one thing I, and this was just me, this was just helpful for me. Yeah. When I did the wrap and turn, I, um, at one point put like a little marker there. Cause I figured if I messed up, it was going to be there. And I knew how to read my stitches, but I didn't know how to read a wrap and turn yet. Okay. So it helped me count my stitches if I ever messed up. Right. And I show, I do show explicitly in the tutorial, how to do the wrap and turn. Yes. There so it is. It's pretty simple. So yep. it's only six rows. So the inner soul is only six rows. Now there are some back and forth and within a row, mm -hmm. but in total, it is six lines of instruction or six yeah. rows of instruction. And yeah. three of those lovely rows are just knit, 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 knit. Yes. Yay. Now so I will tell you, I count after every row. Oh yes. Oh yes. I usually I count while I knit the plain row. That's, I've heard that Lindsay does that. But on the other hand, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You want down. Okay. Okay. What are we doing? He doesn't he would like know. to play with the yarn is what he would like to do. Can you hear him whining? Bloopers, pearl together bloopers, bloopers. He's a whiner. Oh, he's a talker. Oh yeah, he'll cry like that. He'll go, Wah! and then brrr, and then he purrs, and then he's like, Wah! walk and whine. So, yes, I sometimes don't count. I mean, I count before I do the plain row, so that if it's wrong, I don't have to tink back the plain. That's with what the I hand. do. You see what I mean? So that yeah. is wise to just count. Just go ahead and count your double count your stitches after the odd numbered rows. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, that's wise. That is that is what I do. And there's my did oh, I tell you? show us. So, um I keep my patterns just in a plastic sleeve yes. and they go back in binders back here. So then when I because I do not use knit companion, I'm not um a lot I'm of people don't. Paper. I'm a paper person. It's I, fine. A lot of I people just, don't. I use a sticky note until it wears out to keep track of my rows. This so there's this, no more stick. Yeah. So there's no more stick. But oh, one thing, another thing I will say, painter's tape works really well on those plastic sleeves, and it has sticky longer than a post-it note. Yeah. yeah. And it wouldn't get moved. Right. By a child. Um. One thing I will say, because when you're looking at the pattern, you know, trying to do your first six rows of this, if you're a beginner knitter, it was overwhelming to me to try to track my way here. So I wrote out the first six rows. With the corresponding size stitch counts. Yes. So I have. Right. And then every time I did it, I just wrote it out and I stuck it in the sleeve and that's the only thing I've written out, but I have, and it's hilarious because you can, I have a women's small, <laughs> I have a women's medium and it depended on what scratch paper I could find at the time. <laughs> I have, there's my ladies large. And yeah. then I have my men's large too. Nice. And I just stick those in the front of my sleeve. Yeah, as long as you've double checked that you've written all the numbers correct, copied everything correctly, you're golden. Yes. So that's so that's what I do. So my first six rows, I don't have to, I can focus on my knitting more than anything else. And it's better now. But in the beginning, I yeah. was it was a little bit it was a little bit tougher. Just trying to keep track. I was doing it when my daughter was at gymnastics. Oh. Never do row three at gymnastics. So. Right. <laughs> Don't do row three when you're trying to watch a movie with your family. No. Well, I mean, I can now, but oh, oh so I, I looked and mm -hmm. this is the beginning of my 35th pair. <gasps> no way. Yeah, over the years, I've made 35 pairs. Yeah. What is year 35? You know how anniversaries have different things? <laughs> like five is something, 10 is something. What's know. 35? Well, I know. I know. But here's mine. So I decided I, okay, remember we were talking about how you don't want to, um, you know, mix brands necessarily. And particularly with the Lamb's Pride from Brown Sheep Company, this is Lamb's, Lamb's Pride comes in worsted or bulky. I happen to have both. And it's, I believe, 15% mohair. So it's really durable. Um, but it felt at a different rate or, you know, it felt differently than 100% wool. Mohair felts fantastically, but I'm just saying, had I paired this with, you know, the Plymouth Galway, for example, it, it may be like the Harry Potter sorting hat. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but I found some other yarn that had been ramen had had been frogged. And I have a lot of this. I have more like five more of these. Like it wasn't wound all in a big basketball. It was separated. <laughs> Please tell me that's not your mom's sweater. No. <laughs> No, like my mother's angular. sweater, the damn thing, is like part cotton. No. Okay. This was something else that was frogged. I'm not even sure what. I think it was something that came from her house, though. But it is the same as the basketball yarn. I'm sorry, uh, that kills me every single time. That will that would like roll over sweet baby James. I know. He would be a pancake. <laughs> yeah. I think he would think it'd be fun to ride around on it, though. That is bigger than your head. I know you said that last time. <laughs> it still is. Okay, so I'm going to have to get the giant stainless steel popcorn bowl to be able to work from this. That's an interesting hey, yarn bowl. So, I know. So this is what we're having, because this is what I have. And I had, you know, I had some other gray that would look better with it, but it's a different brand and it's not the same fiber content. I'm like, man, it's all right that's what I love about the clogs you can I you know I showed last time I have a bin of leftovers yeah it's just yeah. fun I've done that with I've made like franken clogs where where I just had you know like oh 50 yards of this and 50 yards of that but most of the but they were 100% wool mm -hmm. so I knew it was going to be fine for the felting kind of thing it was going to be fine so yeah. all right so we've knitted 
So this week, complete the inner soul. That's all you have to do for a clog vlog. That's all you have to do this week is do this first one. That's it. Yep. And if you're super ambitious and you have extra needles, then go ahead and knit another one. But then I will warn you, if you do that, then you're at some point going to have to put things on waste yarn or would you? No, because here's, yet. here's two. What I learned when I was a new knitter, mm -hmm. because you have to end up knitting two soles. Right. When I was a newer knitter, it was helpful to me to knit two soles in a row because then I didn't forget how to do the wrap and turn. Right. Right. But so you could actually I probably didn't do it as a new knitter because I wouldn't have had two sets of needles. That's true. Anyway, but if you just want to knit them straight up one at a time, the easy thing to do is just knit these first six rows. So here's how this is going to be. It looks like a weird thing, but because you've done these short rows that makes things uh, longer or thicker, wider, wider is what I'm trying to say, wider in the middle, how this visualize how this is going to work is now this is the bottom and we're gonna knit the top of the foot. So, and then eventually we'll just mattress stitch this together. So this is the sole of the foot like that. You'll see. I should have brought my clogs. We could have been like dual screens. I could have showed you the bottom when you show this part. It's okay. I don't. But if people really wanna know, they can go on my Ravelry and see 35 pictures. No, I don't think I even have them all on there. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. I think I'm only on like pair nine or something. Still, you know, once you get the hang of the pattern, it, it makes sense. It really does make sense. And the, the author, of she's brilliant. So I'll put a link down below where you can purchase the pattern. You can buy yarn if you want to through my affiliate link at Needlepoint Joint. I have a link down below for that. Or go find yourself some yarn at Joann's or Michael's or your local. Support your local independent yarn store if you can. Yes. Absolutely. Yay. So we'll have clog vlog episode two next week. Yay. Which is the top of the foot. Top of the foot. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. And if you're like me, you could just knit the whole thing in green. You could do the entire thing in green. Be like Kermit feet. But then I thought, well, maybe I'll like, you know, needle felt something gardeny on top. Oh, like the Mario mushroom. <laughs> I was thinking since you have a white soles and a green top that you could do like little white flowers, like the dandelion floofs. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Possibilities are endless. I know. All right. I'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye.